I'm Melissa. Uh, in 2015, my husband Joey and I were expecting our second child. His birthday or his um, due date was December 21st, and we were praying for a Christmas baby. What better way uh, to celebrate the birth of a new child on Jesus' birthday? Uh, in September, through a series of providential events, I wound up at an ultrasound that I wasn't expecting to have. And during that ultrasound, the doctor told me that there was a very good chance that we were gonna go into labor early. It was too early. Um, so they gave me a bunch of medicine, uh, set up a bunch of doctor appointments, and we went home praying. <laughs> One week later to the day, uh, I went into labor and the doctors were amazing and they tried so hard to stop the labor but it just wouldn't stop and through an emergency c-section me and my husband Joey delivered our son Joey uh, 14 weeks early and he was two pounds when he was born he was the size of our hands we knew we had a really long journey ahead of us um, but I didn't I don't think I could conceptualize how long the journey would be. Two days after he was born, um, he wound up with a hole in his intestines. And we were at Anne Arundel Medical Center and had to be, Joey had to be medevaced um, to Children's Hospital in DC. We had our 17 month old daughter with us in the car following behind the helicopter and it was terrifying. We were so confused um, and really scared. We were up all night and in the hospital uh, waiting while Joey was in surgery. And the doctor came out and finally told us that the surgery was successful, but that he was really sick and that um, we had to be patient and we just kept praying. Um, two days after his surgery, I remember I was standing at his incubator and I had my hand through the little window and I was holding his hand and for some reason I started thinking about Abraham and Isaac. I'm not one to meditate on Abraham and Isaac often, <laughs> uh, but Abraham popped into my head right at that moment and I started to think about, um, how long he had waited for Isaac and how God asked him to sacrifice Isaac and he brought him up to the top of that mountain uh, probably terrified and questioning and upset but obedient and because of his faith and his obedience God rescued Isaac and as I was thinking about that and I was staring at my little Joey um, I started to think that Joey wasn't mine, he was God's, and that I only got a limited amount of time on earth with him. And however God, however long God wanted me to have him for was how long I get him for. And that my sole purpose was to point him to Jesus. So after that, um, the journey was long, but I was determined to share Jesus as much as I could with that child. I had the nurses play praise music in his room constantly when I couldn't be there. Uh, we traveled from Annapolis to DC every single day. My husband was amazing. He was working a job with very long hours at that time. And he would get up early in the morning, drive to DC, sit with Joey for as long as he could, and then drive back to Annapolis for work work all day and then come home and try to help out me and Eliana at the end of the day. Joey was in the hospital for 101 days and I don't think I could have conceptualized when I had him how long we would actually be living that hospital life in the NICU. Um, but it was through that time that I realized how intensely powerful, powerless I was and how powerful God was. Uh, when Joey was in the hospital, he went through two surgeries. He got really, really sick at one point and almost died. And 
all we could do was pray. That was the only thing that we could do. And we were on our knees with our arms up in the air, just praying. During those long days of driving back and forth to the hospital in traffic, um, all I could do was listen to praise music. It was the one thing that helped me breathe. It helped get my head right. I got sick during the time that Joey was in the hospital and I couldn't visit him because if I went and brought germs into the hospital, he could get sicker. Um, and there was just so many struggles and hurdles that we had to go through during those 101 days. And I never listened to praise music the way that I did when I was on this journey with him. It was something that just fed my soul. It helped get my head right. In the scariest moments, the day that he got sick and almost died, it was all I could do but just turn to Jesus. I had to just lift my hands and surrender to him and know that he had a plan for my Joey. So we had Joey September 22nd. He was released from the hospital on January 1st. And during those months, we had a call to prayer. We were very public with Joey's journey and we had people turning their faces to God and praying for this child. And it was the most amazing thing I've ever witnessed because I had people getting in touch with me who were saying that they didn't even believe in God or they didn't have a great faith in God and that they were praying for him. And it was a time that God was so glorified and I was so moved by how many people wanted to pray for him and wanted to glorify God. And God, I mean, there was so much that could have gone wrong with Joey in the hospital. And he's perfect today. He's almost six. And I remember uh, when he was in the hospital, he had these little teeny tiny legs. I mean, I used to call him little chicken legs. And now I watch him ride his bike and his legs are so strong. It's so incredible to watch. Uh, one of the songs during that time that I really clung on to was Cornerstone. And I have videos of him now just belting out Cornerstone at the top of his lungs. And those are gifts that only God could give. That's nothing that I could have done. Um, and so when I say that I was powerless, I really was. God showed his mercy his love, his healing, and his grace through that whole situation. He brought me and my husband closer to God. He brought family closer to God. And he was so glorified uh, that I'll never forget it.